Hello again. Thank you so much for joining us now. On Sunday, the 19th of April, the Carl de Toy Centre for Hearing Impaired Children will host their annual fun walk. The event will begin at the Tigerberg Hospital grounds. The route will be 5Ks and will be wheelchair and pram friendly. Dogs on leashes will also be welcome. The centre is the only one in South Africa which accommodates deaf children from birth. Now, to tell us more about this, we welcome Ruth Bourne, the principal at the Carl de Toy Centre, to tell us a little bit uh, uh, more of what we can expect. But before we go there, uh, Ruth, a very good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Tell us a bit more about the facility itself. Well, the Coral de Toy Centre is, is a school, but we have an early intervention program as well. So as soon as a child is diagnosed as having a hearing loss, they come to us for intervention. And that is terribly important because a child with a hearing loss can have a terrible, that can have a terrible negative impact on their development. But if you start early to work with a child with a hearing loss, you can overcome all those barriers and the child can have an unlimited future and a wonderful life, um, but you've just got to do the right things. And so that's what we are there for. That is our facility. We start with a young child, we empower the parents, and we try and get them into inclusive education. How many learners do you accommodate? Well, at the moment, we have 141 children with hearing impairment in the school, and uh, we can accommodate more. We certainly never turn a child away because we know how urgent it is that they get help as early as possible. Mm, that's so true, and, and, and I like the fact that you also empower the parents because one can feel very helpless and hopeless not knowing how to communicate with the child. So it's not only about intervening with the young one, but also making sure that parents can relate. Speak to us about how long you intervene for. I, I understand that you only accommodate learners up to grade three. Am I correct? Yes, we, because our vision is that they can go into mainstream schools after that. Um, and I think the important thing to know is that if you help the young child with a hearing loss during those first three years of life, they can overcome all the barriers. In fact, if we got everything right, we would not be having a school at all because our children would be able to leave us by three years of age. That is our vision because the brain is, a, is programmed to acquire language in the first three years of life. And if you do the right things early, those children don't need specialized education. They can go into mainstream life. Hmm. And how long has the center been in operation? We started in 1973, so we're in our 42nd year now, 43rd year. And uh, it's been wonderful because I've been part of the school for, for a lot of that time. And so I've been able to track our children, where they've gone on to, how their lives have developed. And it's wonderful to see that there can be no limits on their lives. We've got children who have gone on to, into careers that you would never imagine somebody with a hearing impairment could do. For instance, we have a professional ballet dancer. She's profoundly deaf. She wears a cochlear implant. Uh, we have a, a young man who graduated with a degree in music. Piano is his, ma is his major subject. Another deaf girl who sings in perfect pitch and sells her CDs. So there really is uh, an unlimited future for a child with a hearing loss. It's just that you have to start early. And one has to remember that a baby starts to listen in utero. So by the time the baby's born, there's already a deficit for the child with a hearing loss. Mm. And in South Africa, unfortunately, there's no legislation for newborn screening, which means that the average age of diagnosis is two and a half, three, which mm. means they've actually missed their ideal opportunity for language development. Mm. So talk to us now about the walk that will be taking place on Sunday. What are your objectives? Well, it's a fundraiser. Um, it's also an awareness builder. So we do need funds. Our methodology is expensive and we're continually looking for support to provide these children with good amplification and to, to just run our method. But in, a, in addition to that, it's about awareness, to make people aware that, that children with hearing loss need to be identified early, that newborn screening is possible for one hour after birth. Even though it's not legislated in this country, it's available and, and parents need to know that they should be having their children's hearing screened at birth. Mm. The funds so raised... Yes, sorry to interrupt and, you there. Yes, continue, please. 
the funds that we're going to raise will certainly always be ploughed back into the children. Mm. Um, our hearing aids are terribly expensive. And our children has to, have to have the best possible amplification because they are learning natural spoken language. They are learning through listening because the brain, that is how the brain learns. And with good amplification, they can learn in the same natural way that any other child can. It just has to all start early. And that's what we're about. Ruth, you've already answered the question I was going to ask you. I wanted to find out whether or not the money raised will be subsidizing the children in one way, shape or form, uh, whether perhaps it will go towards the materials uh, that they need in order to develop adequately. So I think you've, you've touched on that already. But Ruth, talk to us now about the time, uh, the place. We know Tigerberg Hospital is where the fun walk starts. Speak to us about the time, the entry uh, fee, uh, etc. Okay, it's 40 rand per adult, 30 rand per child, and 30 rand for the dog as well. Um, it's a nice, safe environment because it's five kilometers within the property on the grounds of Tigerberg Hospital. It starts at nine o'clock, and it really is a, a great buzz and a nice atmosphere, everybody enjoying themselves. After the walk, there's a lot of food on sale, and people can have a nice hearty breakfast, and there are lucky drawers. And, and really, it's, it's um, just a nice atmosphere and a nice family get-together and a nice thing family can do together. And it's five kilometers, right? It's five kilometers. So it's not that bad. It's not that bad at all. So for those who want to sleep in on a Sunday and are dreading a long walk, 5Ks is not bad at all. And if I say that, then you know it's, it's definitely reasonable. Ruth, thank you so much for joining us. All the best for this weekend. We'll have to leave that conversation there. Uh, Ruth Bourne, the principal at the Carl Dutoy Center. All right.